Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee Vlog. In this video, we are going to be cupping in the new setup here. We've got some coffees from Mill City Roasters and from our friends over at Genesis Coffee. And uh, we're going to cup it against our very own. We have some, uh, a dark roasted here for Mr. Kodo. And then I have another medium roasted Mr. Kodo. And we want to be able to pull out and maybe even see if we can kind of match what they're doing with their medium and see where we lie on the scale of what this roaster calls medium versus like what I would call medium or if I'm totally off or close. So let's find out. Another new thing we got in the coffee lab, if you didn't already see, we've got our new old Grindmaster 890. This was a, ro uh, a grinder that was specifically made for Starbucks. So I saw, uh, researched on um, like the forms and everything. We bought it off of eBay for a really good deal. The burrs are really great. Uh, the burrs in this grinder were actually marketed as precision European burrs, um, which I haven't been able to confirm this, but supposedly it's, you know, like a Malkinig 90 didding millimeter burr. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Let's do the research. Let's try it out. The seller was a really good seller, really trusted seller. It came basically the next day, tried it out immediately. It works perfectly. I've been doing a couple of like uh, test grinds um, when we're going to be selling and having the service of grinding coffee for our customers now, which is really nice. But what we're going to do also in this cupping is with everybody's coffee here is run this grinder and its quality and its size and consistency against our fellow Ode, which is also an excellent grinder. So let's just see how they match up and um, see if we can tell any differences in clarity of flavor. Uh, so I'm excited, let's go. Okay, so little background about these coffees. Uh, we have Genesis Coffee from my friend Alex. We have Mill City Roaster Coffee from the Mill City Roaster class and the Big Red Roaster. That was so cool uh, to get to meet their team in person for the first time. Coffee Fest, you gotta let me process everything that happened there and I'll, I'll tell you all about it, whether it's worth it or not to go, blah, 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 my experience. Uh, serving coffee with Hesse. I'll get to all that stuff. Um, but I just really want to get in here and get in some cupping work because um, I, as always, just meeting all my mentors online and actually just getting to talk to them in person. I, I want to put down that work and sort of like execute what I learned just in talking and kind of reinforcing the things that I learned while I was there. Um, and you know what? Some of these lessons you learn like um, again, you know, even though it's repetitive, I think it is really helpful is because it just kind of like reinforces, revalidates all those things. Um, if anything, your knowledge of whatever that thing that you learned a million times, maybe it goes a little deeper, a little deeper, a little deeper, which is really cool. And um, yeah, so I want to get outside of my bubble. And I do that with you guys when you guys send me coffee to cup here on camera. That's so cool. Like one of the biggest tips that Lauren gave me was you need to keep cupping other people's coffee, you know, whether it's good or bad or whatever, just keep cupping outside of your own roast because you can kind of get caught up in um, this sort of echo chamber that can happen. Right. And I think I did talk about that in the last vlog where it's like, yeah, like <laughs> my coffee's good. What are you talking about? <laughs> But inside you're like, please, somebody like it. Um, but yeah, it's good if you can keep cupping other people's coffee, tasting other people's coffee. Um, that way you don't get stuck just sort of like, you know, in a maybe in a creative rut, so to speak. Um, you're not letting anything kind of like influence you, which could be a good thing for sure. But you're also maybe not allowing yourself to grow. Right. If you're not um, seeing what else is out there and seeing how other people do things and letting things help you grow and elevate you versus like just, 
me, myself, I, only me, like, uh, sort of like very lonely, very um, arrogant way of maybe taking on that path or journey. But hey, we all, we all do it, all right? <laughs> so don't even feel bad. Uh, but if you can, they were like, hey, if you can get out and cup once a week, um, put anything on the board. You know, light, dark, medium, same coffee, but different levels, all kinds of stuff. The more stuff that you can, like, uh, throw yourself at, I think you give yourself more wider breadth of knowledge and just exposure to new things. And um, throughout all that, you will find your way, you know, have patience with it, have fun with it. Uh, that's what I'm doing anyway. So uh, we're going to put in some coffee work. I'm just waiting for this very large pot of water to boil. All right, so we got our little shot clock here. So another thing, Lauren says she cups at like nine or 10 minutes and that's when she's writing stuff down, okay? So what have we been doing? Seven, eight, like that. So we're gonna come back in like <laughs> 10 minutes after the break, okay? So we'll break them, we'll do all that. Let's go around and smell. I got my uh, smell powers activated, hopefully. Ooh, we got some really, really roasted one right there. Mmm. Mmm. It actually smells good. Like a cinnamon raisin thing. So, when there's a lot like this, you want to try to move <laughs> as fast as you can, I feel, because, you know, they're, they're not all sitting in their grounds at the same time, are they? Alright, so, a lot of dark coffees on the board. We have our rinse cups, right? So see how kind of like muddy they are and we have a lot of them. It's good to, to rinse them out. Or just give yourself fresh water. They don't look terribly dark or anything as well. Even mine has some lightness to it, that's good. Here's our timer, right? Let's come back at around nine minutes, we're at five. Okay. First run through. Mmm, mm, little baggy, this one. Eh, old orange. There's a citrus, it's old. Um, pith. Orange pith, there's a bitterness, and there's a bagginess. <laughs> this one has some carbon element to it. That's the standout for me in that I don't like dark coffees, but there's something else there, which is a very, very dark chocolate. <laughs> a dark cacao. Cacao! Not bad, not bad. Um, you know, 
nostalgic flavors. I think people who like dark coffee will like this coffee. <laughs> okay. I, I do want to have a dark offering on the menu. I won't personally drink it, you know, but if maybe I want to run some creamer through it or some crazy ass like uh, evaporated milk and do the Vietnamese style, right? Like then I'll, I'll do that for sure. <laughs> Sorry for the accent. <laughs> this is actually, it's brightening up as it's cooling. So that's good. I know this is my medium, right? Mr. Koto medium, good. So it's getting sweet and brightening up. The acidity is giving the sweetness some roundness. So this looks good. You know, when I listen to Lauren's words, I'll, you know, it's always like this. You, when you listen and learn from somebody who's way more advanced than you, right? You're not, you're not getting everything yet. But you'll, you'll find that some, some things will permeate through. <clears throat> Especially things that you've heard many times, right? You're like... Um, what, what would she say? Like one of the things was like temperature, uh, mask flavor. That's a common thing that she says, right? And so you won't know what that means in an entirety without experience, without going through these things, without, without, um, having a larger breadth of access to cupping coffees, right? You won't really know the definition of that in its entirety yet. But then as you keep learning, right, you keep adding on to what that actually means, um, so it's cool. Those are all the little things that, you know, run through your head. Wow. Ooh, this is getting creamier and sweeter. Mmm, okay. So, she was saying that acidity gives sweetness, supports sweetness. Without acidity and a good level of it, the sweetness will actually not be as sweet. Okay? I hope I got that right, Lauren. But um, I can kind of see that now, and I'm trying to make that connection in my brain and my, like, the little synapses in my brain. How, how that acidity in this particular cup is supporting the sweetness of this cup and making it sweeter. Okay. Mm. The way that you maybe bite on a milk chocolate bar and that sort of like thing that you get, that's kind of what's going on here for me. Mm. They were talking about clean, and this is what this is, clean, in that it's sort of skating on the citrus note, but it's not sharp. It's sort of smooth, and we're not running into anything astringent, sharp, offensive, but it is not as sweet, as bodied, as this one. And so I call that clean, you know. Mm. It's almost as if I were to judge these two in terms of color. This would be more opaque. And this one I could see through more. <laughs> I don't know. That's what speaks to me. Mmm but a very subtle sweetness in terms of like, versus a milk chocolate sweetness, it's a vanilla sweetness. But vanilla can be strong too, so I need to add a, a descriptor to this vanilla, which is gonna be something like vanilla muffin. Okay, vanilla muffin. So not vanilla pod, vanilla bean, vanilla artificial a vanilla extract, no because those can be quite strong and quite concentrated. This is a very smooth, subtle, soft vanilla. I mean, granted, I don't have all the words, right? I don't have the vocabulary yet, I'm very new, but um, it feels like a vanilla muffin, I wanna say. <laughs> okay, all right, let's see here. 
Mm. Oh, all right. I think I need to spit for this one. <laughs> All right. I can't tell. <laughs> so I know this one was fellow. This one is grindmaster. The GM. I can't tell. Uh, I would need somebody else to help me with that. Um, but somebody's sleeping. <laughs> All right, so this one is quite bright. There is a sharpness to it. Yes. It's not offensive to me because I like zing. There is a bitterness to it. It's similar to my, the way that this is. <laughs> like mine has a lot of that a sort of sharpness. Okay, let's compare it to this one. Mm, okay. All right, this one is smooth. The transitions from the top to the middle to the bottom of the palette on this coffee is smooth. The transitions. This is like an electric guitar. Right? In terms of its acidity. And that acidity is quite sharp. Now, I roasted this today, didn't I? So let's take that into consideration. This needs to calm its ass down. <laughs> you calm down, calm down. Uh, we need to rest this for two days at least and then cup it again and then deliberate, all right? So we know, Mr. Koto, medium roast. We know you haven't rested, it's all right. All right, um, so that's why I'm calling it sharp. It's too much, it's a tad offensive, sorry. That's my bad. It's not my bad, it's, we need, it needs to rest, okay? <laughs> 48 hours, it's a natural process coffee. All right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what are we in? The minute what? 22, right? Common. 22. I wanna say this is a, also a, um, well, I wouldn't know, actually. I wouldn't know what, what variety this is or process. <laughs> It tastes like a natural processed coffee, but there's something in there. It reminds me of my Ugandan, the Volcano Sultan. Mm -hmm. It's got this little, this little, I don't know, a little tail. There's a tail on this guy. Um, I feel like it's from... I don't know where it's from, but it's good, but there's something there that seems like it's that ferment note. It reminds me that Ugandan is a little funky. Is it funk? Funk. Not bad, but funky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Acidity is medium. I'm tasting the two back and forth, back and forth to see if I can pick anything up. <laughs> this one almost seems more <laughs> flavors are available to me here. And I know this is the fellow ode. So let me remember that, observe that. 
No deliberations, but observe. Let's observe. All right. We kind of cupped backwards, didn't we? <laughs> okay. Cool. Here we go. At the 24-minute uh, mark, the fellow owed same coffee is brighter. Maybe not brighter. I feel like I'm tasting more. What could that mean? It could mean not necessarily that it's better. What could that mean? It could mean that the grind size is smaller. It's extracting more, particularly, right? And if it extracts more, maybe it's a bit stronger in brew strength. So I'm tasting a bit more. Because let's remember, we didn't throw this thing through that size thingy that you can you can throw like a grind through a sieve and it will basically filter out, hey, this is size four or what, whatever. I don't really know what the number, the measurement is for that. But you could be really um, particular with how consistent the grind size is between two grinders if you have that instrument. I don't have it. Um, we're just going to let our taste buds help us. That's why you need freaking people to cup with, okay? <laughs> it's really hard for me to tell now. Okay, so I don't know. I made that observation. Um, hopefully I'll remember that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll write it down. Um, and then have my cousin, uh, my, uh, my husband cup these. Did I say cousin? <laughs> All right, flavors. <laughs> Creamy body. Acidity is low. The flavor is canned mandarin orange. I'm getting that like the rind, the pith, in terms of the bitterness. What's the fruit? It's very fruity. It's on the fruitier side. It's a very, very Dark cherry, mm. graham cracker, marshmallow. And yeah, that canned mandarin. <laughs> Black tea. Big astringency, but in a good way, like in tea, the way that tea has that sort of tannin bite back. Creamy. All right. I tried my best. I tried my best. I'm not very good on identifying the f actual fruits, but we can go acidity levels, sweetness levels, body levels, mouthfeel overall. Overall, did I have a favorite before I turn these around and be all wrong? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's do a pass again. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Really nice. Okay. I like these two the most. Okay. Um, this needs some rest. I'm tasting paper bag. That's all I'm tasting right now. I'm getting a orange peel pith on the bitterness. It might be orange in there, candied orange, but I don't know. We're trying to let this guy rest. This is too dark for me, but you know, for them dark homies, I got it. Um, very good, clean. What's exceptional here, I think, and that I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to understand is the transition between the first, second, and third phase of it all. 
and making those transitions smooth if that's, you know, if I'm going for this, right? And how, how does this, how does this happen? That would be really informative for me to, so I'll go dig and, and see what the roast profile looks like for this. For this guy, great acidity, really tasty, tasty throughout. What We're into the 31 minute mark, still popping, still got the zing, which I love. So I love this one. Seems like the fellow ode is giving me more flavor, but like I said, it could be it has a finer grind size. Maybe it's over extracting. I kind of like a stronger brew, okay? And this one, really similar to what I think that could be later on as it, as it rests. Um, thinner in its body, so I'm picking this one. This one has a more syrupy body, which I like. Body. Give me that body. All right. Okay. Reveal. Let's go. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Hail Mary medium roast blend. Okay. That makes sense. Ripe plum on the nose. Citrus forward with chamomile, hibiscus, and cranberry. Light, bright, and clean. Okay. Clean. Yeah. Uh, light. Yes, definitely. All right. So this one was the Katura light roast. Yeah. Floral, honey, citrus, cranberry, smooth and balanced. I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot, Alex. You did a really great job, by the way. Um, both heavily drinkable. What was this one? Clean and bright, navel orange, fresh cherry, Lemon, silky, okay, okay. Colombian coffee. Where was this from? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I love, <laughs> uh, shout out Genesis Coffee Roasters. In the beginning, there was coffee and it was good. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. Um, 7.31, okay. Colombia from the Julia region. Who, Huli... Um, sorry, uh, Tarky washed. All right. This one was really good too. Candied balanced brown sugar, dark chocolate, red apple round. I think I said round. Cool. Mine. Okay. Okay. You know, sorry guys, you know, um, excellent, <laughs> excellent coffees. Thank you so much. Genesis Coffee. Let's get this in camera and frame. Okay. Um, excellent coffees as usual. Mill City Roasters. I'm trying, you know. Thank you for being the North Star. Uh, okay. Genesis Coffee. I like it. I like it. Uh, you called it too. You thought I would like it? I do. <laughs> um, you said it had like five coffees in it. I wouldn't be able to tell if it had three or five, but you know, it's all good. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for another I Cup Your Coffee. Um, more to come, Coffee Vest, serving coffee with Hasea Coffee Source, my green coffee supplier, um, and a lot more to come. Yeah, we have a lot of, I have a lot of content to edit. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be really cool. Anyway, if you wanna send me your coffee to cop, if you want to send me your coffee to cup, you can do so in the description box below. Otherwise, we'll be see you in the next one.